What's up guys? As you saw by the title, uh, I'm going to show you here how I fix uh, the sink loss. And I'm saying I, but it was not only me. Um, so, first of all, sink loss when you have a Speedowino. In my case, I have a Speedy EFI. I'm not going to extend this too much, but it's uh, one kind of Speedowino. Uh, those guys here, they are local from Spokane, and they uh, have a team that put together uh, those issues. They have a good harness. I have friends running this successfully. I run now successfully my 2JZ with that thing, so uh, I'd rather get that than um, Speedwinos anywhere. But but um, it's about Speedwinos single loss, right? Um, what happens is there's a crankshaft, uh, there's a crank sensor, Right, which is this guy here in my case, unfortunately you're on top of the alternator and there's a trigger wheel on your crankshaft behind the, the harmonic balancer here and that thing spins and there's some missing tooth in my case, right? And every time that it reaches the missing tooth, uh, the sensor picks up and sends the information all the way to the ECU. So this is what tells the ECU how fast you're going, what's your RPM and all that stuff. When you get sync loss, something went wrong on this route between the uh, trigger wheel that goes down there and all the way to the ECU. So, let me show you what was happening to me and then I'm going to show you how I fix it. I'm not going to extend too much, I'm not going to show you my mistakes, I'm just going to show you how to fix it. But this is what I had on my logs and you're going to see a little pull. So this is one I took. <clears throat> before messing with the filters and stuff. This is my first gear and this is my second gear and you see cutting off right here. So the RPM as you see up here I have 4600 and then boom drop to zero and then picks back up and then it keeps going right I keep going and then I had another cut off again to zero Alright, so one thing you need to do before you go ahead and do anything is be sure that you don't have noise in your wiring. So I delete the factory wiring, uh, which is a shooted wire, and I use the the ECU guys, they have an 8 feet wire, uh, and this is a shoot as part of the harness, their harness. As you see there, I have the connectors of the harness and stuff, and one of the connectors is uh, four wires and the shield that comes from this here. So I got that guy and wired straight to my crank to isolate any noise that would come from there. Um, it didn't change much because the VS sensor, it comes on a wave form and the ECU expects it on a square form. So if it's a hall sensor, which is the one that has three wires, you're good. Um, if it's not a hall sensor, it's a VS sensor, you need this little uh, cam shaft and crank shaft or vice versa uh, signal conditioner which is going to transform from wave to square but check it out so this is the Speedwino board and this is the Mini Max A2 so this is the conditioner that receives the wave and converts into um, square and if you look further let me close this here uh, when I post my question, someone point me out to this site and say, hey dude, uh, you have your configuration to falling edge, but this conditioner is inverting, so set your trigger to rising edge. So that was one of my problems also. So another thing you need to do, if you go to uh, open your tuner studio and you see dia diagnostics and high speed, you can start a tooth logger. The tooth logger, I'm, I'm here in my office, it's not going to work, but the tooth logger is going to look like this. And it should look like this. So you have uh, the number of teeth and then the last teeth before the missing teeth should be this guy. And then you have the triple the size, right? So I have 33 and this is the 34th and then probably 35, 36 and then goes again one two three so when you invert it and that happened to me when I came here to my trigger settings and I changed this falling to rising um, I got a tooth log something like this here 
you see two bars. These two bars means that the positive and the negative are inverted. So you need to invert the positive and negative from your sensor uh, to the ECU. So the ECU says that the positive is red and negative is black. Uh, and coming from your sensor is black and white, right? Black is negative and white is positive. Uh, you, you need to switch, right? And switching, you should get something like this. When you get something like this, that's good. So this was one more problem. Although I did all of this, um, I didn't fix my problem yet. It got better, but it didn't fix it. But this is all necessary. You need to have a wire without a noise. You need to put that thing on rising and you gotta check your tooth log and be sure that you don't have two bars going up high. And if you are, your wires are switched. So that's done. And now the most important thing, uh, the guys from, shout out to them by the way, the guys from Speedy EFI, since they're local, um, he came here to my house and got the ECU, he checked everything that we are checking now that I've done before he come in here and he said, man, looks good and you know, he didn't see anything bad. Uh, so he went to my ECU and upgraded the uh, firmware, which is nothing more than getting a bunch of code from GitHub, uh, the latest version, which was 202008, and that's now. We are in 202009, to be very honest. Uh, but that was the latest version, and he got the 202008 and put in my ECU, and then he said, "Let's go for a ride." He he tweaked some uh, warming configurations, enrichment, and you know some new things that the 202008 has that the 2019-03. That's what I was running. Um, it didn't have. So being a software developer, I really think that this new version has something that treats, either treats different the, the sync loss, so I still have it some somewhere, but it's treating differently and it's letting the RPM go. Um, or it has a different kind of filter, uh, which is exactly the same thing I said. Or it actually has a better support for 36-2 teeth, which is the one I'm using on this engine. But either way, it put a smile on my face. Check out the ride. And finally, uh, car is running, but my last problem, when he was here and he plugged on his laptop, uh, when we were doing a pull first gear, 4300 RPM and 4200 RPM, his laptop, his tuner studio would reset. He figured the problem out, uh, unplugging stuff, and the VVTI uh, was incorrect, that was the first problem. So the VVTI has two wires, you come in here, uh, the left wire is red and white, which is negative, and the right wire is white and red, which is positive. Um, so, what I did before is I plugged the positive to the ECU and the negative to the ground on the car. That's incorrect. The ECU provides ground signal. So, this red and white would go to the ECU signal. And the white and red, which is the one that goes inside, goes to a 12 volt positive somewhere. So I did that, it got better, um, it stopped resetting to the studio. It didn't happen much on my computer anyway, but I could run the car. Uh, the thing is, my last thing is the car doesn't run very smooth with the VVTi plug. I don't know why yet. So this is unplugged which is working perfectly. So I'm unplugging this, but I still want to use the VVTi because this is gonna give me like 30, 40 uh, uh, horsepower on lower band. And that's what I need because 
uh, until the turbo spools, which is pretty quick. It takes a while. And this here is going to help me uh, to spool way faster. So I hope this helps you. I didn't find anything related to um, sink loss like this detail. Uh, even even saying uh, the ground wire I made mistakes I can tell them quickly uh, replace the sensor which I measured and the people say that should measure between 800 and 1600 mm -mm, that's not right I measured this one was 2400 uh, ohms and I bought a new one saying oh man that's my problem right there and the new one was 2200 ohms so People say the range is 800 or 600 to 12 or 1500. No, it's not right. Um, it is way higher than that, and that's good still. I bought a new alternator because I I also read the alternator would be a problem. I also bought a new fuel dumpner, which is our dumper here, fuel pulsation pulsation dumper. So the fuel comes in here. And goes through this thing and this thing has a little bounce thing on top uh, before going to the rail so it, everything passes through here the one I had has the had a screw and the screw was loose and there's a calibration so you, even though I put the screw I wasn't sure if this was happening because of me um, got different sets of um, plugs not once but multiple times so if you're running a 2jz turbo uh this is the way to go because it's colder it's cooler it doesn't get as hot as the other one so first we were thinking that the pops were misfiring and we were we were chasing the wrong things uh even fuel pressure i increased the fuel pressure i reduced the fuel pressure um changed the coils i redone the whole wiring before those guys uh, using it straight from the ECU to those guys to avoid um, uh, dirty signal somewhere so you know multiple things I couldn't find anything I really hope that if you are having this kind of issue this is your problem because uh, that's gonna be much easier for you um, I suffer for weeks weeks and weeks um, I don't even know. I, I was frustrated. I was, I mean, I, honestly, I didn't know what to do. And, and even going to another ECU, the other ECUs would have issue also. Because if you have a dirty signal, um, you're going to have dirty signal everywhere. So I didn't know what my problem was. Apparently, it wasn't actually in here. Uh, or it was in here. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's a mystery. I, I know that I have here a problem uh, for effect which was switched and I know the rising edge but I don't know how that would be in a different ECU I'm in love with this ECU again uh, I have a new car coming to the channel so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe hit the subscribe button right now and in December mid-December I'll get a car um, it's going to I bought already but it's coming from Australia and um, yeah it's gonna be dope I'm gonna definitely uh, put a turbo in it do the same thing I did to this car um, and I'm gonna put that ECU I have another Eclipse outside I don't know if you see the videos just scroll through my uh, playlist you're gonna see Eclipse 420A or Eclipse 2G um, and I use an AMFIC I'm definitely going to later on put one of those here because I mean I'm very familiar with this now and you know it's being fun to learn I'm not a tuner I'm not a mechanic and I'm able to do all of this so if I can do it you can do it too um, but you know follow my steps but don't blame me uh, follow my steps at your own risk do your own things I don't mind uh, changing a timing to 20 in in if my engine explodes I would just build another one uh, but you know there's nobody to blame and so if you want to use my tune yeah feel free you saw my tables and all that stuff I keep posting videos to help you guys and I love doing this uh, but again not a tuner uh, learning as I make the videos and showing you the results 
in real life so it's not something that I'm doing and just telling you you saw the car driving uh, and that's pretty much it all right guys hope you enjoy don't forget to subscribe uh, leave a little comment here if you have something to add or if you have any question to to ask I'll be very glad to answer because someone helped me I'll be glad to help you too all right see you around guys I'm eating some McDonald's.